So hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We're just gonna have a simple sit down talking type video today because honey, it's about all this girlfriend can do right now. So <laughs> it's always something now, isn't it? Hmm. So before we begin talking all about all the talking stuff, I wanted to show you this. This is actually in the intro of the video that went up yesterday morning. I filmed the, the last two videos that you saw, I filmed pretty much back to back early Friday morning because they, well, my mind was racing. There was a lot to talk about. Actually, there was a lot of questions to put out there for you to go do your own homework and you've been doing it and you've been commenting all about it. See how good that is? That's what I'm talking about. From the National Forest to other little deals. See, you guys are in the know. But this was in the intro, and I had a question about it. This is by Peter Julian, and he is an artist. You can look him up. You can, Wikipedia even has a story on him. Um, and this is called The Egg. So I kept this, I get a ton of mail and um, I love to keep all my cards and whatnots and some things I like to display in my home and I thought that this was beautiful. Actually, I'm going to have it framed. I'm going to buy a frame for it. Um, I thought this was a beautiful picture and I, I took this more as um, an indigenous style portrait and obviously he's holding an egg or she could be holding an egg for that matter. But my point is, is it's actually called the egg. So this was actually sent to me and it is the card. Um, this artwork has been obviously put into cards and I wanted you to see that it's actually from the artist himself. He is obviously a follower and I'm so excited. Uh, what an honor. And um, so I meant to show this um, several times and finally went, oh my gosh, I want to show this. And uh, so this is from the artist himself. You can look him up and the uh, name of the art that you're seeing there is called the egg. We've all been fussing about eggs, right? And us chicken ladies love eggs and I'm sure there's probably more meaning to it. Um, I would love to know, um, but uh, I thought I just think that's a really neat piece. So that's why I put that into the intro of my video. Sometimes I do things that are related to what we're going to be talking about, and sometimes you know, I get a lot of joy uh, with my filming, a little bit of my filming that I do. I like to just, if I see a beautiful flower, or if one of my cats are doing something silly, or if a baby chicken is hatching, I just capture moments here. And that's for my videos, that's for my pleasure. Um, I think it is nice to see on film. So this was one of the features in the video. So that should explain exactly what that is. And I am going to get it framed. Can I set that? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't say anything about this because honestly, I just try to avoid thinking about it because I've already had this done before and I really despise having surgery. <laughs> Um, I had a minor surgery on Friday. I knew I was going to be having it. Um, I did have surgery. I'm not going to, you'll you just see bandage is all you're going to see right now. Um, so I had to have surgery two years ago on this particular spot. It is skin cancer. Um, and I've been having trouble with it again. And um, so the problem with me is you don't know if the skin cancer is returning and has spread all around. Or is it that Patera keloids so bad that it is incredible? And I scar horribly. So I went to, so just to say, I've been to the dermatologist. I've had several of you ask me questions about Patera. So <laughs> I know I, I'm, I'm just a little mole in a hole. <laughs> I have tons of moles. And um, I did actually have this this one right here. It's not dangerous, but I went ahead and had it froze. And I had another spot froze, but this had to ha have a lot more attention. So I'm waiting on my biopsy results. And if obviously it has returned, then I'm going to have to have a much more extensive situation happen here. Now, here's the deal. I didn't give myself enough credit for how bad this can make you feel. Um, I think we were always, aren't we always sort of knocked down a little bit when we either get sick or we have to have, even if it's just a minor surgery, we don't give ourselves enough, I don't want to say credit, but, you know, I sort of try to live like superwoman and I just keep going. Well, so that didn't work out real well for me. So I'm going to have to take a couple of days mildly off from some of the things you see me do, which means other people in my family 
Gabriel is the, especially the one is stepping up and doing all the things that he already does. But in addition, all the things that mom does, because I really can't lift anything. So, you know, am I in the bed? Do I have a fever? No, um, but I am restricted and I'm holding my breath really hard right now that I'm not going to be any more restricted than what you're seeing at this point. You know, give it a good week or so, maybe two weeks, let it heal, and then graduate myself back into all the things that I lift and move and all that, because it has to be done. And uh, so there's that. Now, yes, my husband will help me. My boys are helping me. I've got all kinds of help. So it's not like it's not going to get done, but it's very frustrating for me. And I talked to you all, I have talked to you about this situation before, about well, it, it, it touches a lot of things. For example, are you prepared, right? Um, are you ready for any situation to come your way? Because you can think that things are minor, like I kind of did. I, I was just, I was really hopeful. And, uh, you know, James understands me more than anybody. He's like, you can't, I can't sit still long enough. Like the only thing that I sit still for is probably to do genealogy <laughs> and to very rarely watch something that I find some interest in, which is very few things. Like I can watch Top Gun and relate to the opening scenes of <laughs> Mach 10, right? Because I'm running Mach 10 all the time, but that's hard for me. So like, for example, James told me yesterday, he's like, there's a genealogy class. I know you want to go to, I want you to, I'll do the chores. You just take a shower, relax. We're going to go and you're going to sit and you're going to behave like a good little girl and you're going to do all your genealogy and all the things that you need to find out. And, uh, and then we'll get a little something to eat and we're going to come home and you're going to do nothing. Well, even that much kind of made me feel really bad. So here's my point. Guys, things are going to happen to you. And are you prepared for that? Now, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir to a lot of people that have maybe have had health issues or their husband has health issues. And this is why I keep saying, don't beat yourself up. Uh, and I'm this is, you know, I'm trying not to be hypocritical here. I get very frustrated with this because I'm, I'm go, 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 go. And, but, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. If I have to, if, I'm not going to, we're going, Lord, it ain't going to happen, right? But let's just teach, the, let's just talk about it in a hypothetical so everybody has a learning experience, right? I'm not going to speak it into existence, right? But if I have to have more surgery and they have to take more margin, um, I'm telling you that it could very likely get quite large in this whole area. Not only is that incredibly devastating because I scar so bad. So there's the, there's that female vanity that comes in, which, you know, I'm getting so old now. I don't care. Uh, I told James, I said, I'm just going to tattoo it. <laughs> and he was like, Okay, which I don't even know if I could even take a tattoo because I scar so bad. But anyway, so I'm dealing with that anxiety uh, alone in, in itself. But also, here's the thing. I have to refigure everything that I'm doing. Thank God. Thank the good Lord that we are, um, we try our best every day to be prepared. You know, I don't have to worry about going and getting dog food today. I don't have to, you know, go worry about doing all of these things because we try to continue to stay that way and to remain in that mindset. Not only that, I have to say I anticipated the potential a, a couple of days before, so I made sure I topped things off. But this is an entire lifestyle that we have to, to be familiar with and to be constantly on the move with. Not only that... But there is a huge conversation here with, you know, if you're the person and every family has this, okay, we're all guilty of this to a point, okay? Our family is, I'm assuming your family is, and I shouldn't have hit that, and I did. See, I'm, bruise, I'm bruising so bad. Um, but like I told, I got up this morning and uh, James was like, are you all right? And I said, yeah, you know, I'm good. I got nauseous on Friday. And, uh, but, um, you know, here's the conversation. I had to go to my youngest son and say, I know you do all these chores, but here's the thing. We're going to have to, we're going to have to amp it up again. We're going to have to go back into survival reminder mode. This is very important for us as a family, but I physically can't tear this. I physically don't need to get sick. I don't need to get a fever. You know, I'm not going to heal if I go 90 miles an hour doing what I normally do every day. It's, it's that moment of it is okay. It is okay to have a little bit of help. It is okay to slow down. It is okay to work on other things, which put me in the mental mode also, which I want you to think about. Do you remember how I told you that I just felt like 
I probably am not going to be gardening as hard this year that we were going to be switching gears to other projects that must be done. And, you know, some people question me on that. And I, you know, I think about it. I'm like, I know that's the right thing. And I do. But you know how that little devil comes up here and sits and goes, you're so weak. You're not doing enough. You know what? I think even with this much done at this point, this was a reminder that my gut instinct and my intuition is doing a pretty darn good job because I'm preparing myself in a different way because I, in my mind, I was, I'm just not, I'm just going to do other things, right? In reality, God could be working to set you up to prepare you for something that you don't know that's happening. What I mean by that is, is remember how I told you, I said, I'm not going, I'm going to let my volunteer seeds, let me clarify that, <laughs> uh, work in the big garden. And I'm going to seed save and I'm going to do these things down here, but we have other things that we need to organize or get, you know, get done. And, and I'm not going to kill myself up in that garden again this year. It, it was wonderful and it was fruitful, but it is, an, it's major labor. Okay. On a, on a daily, weekly basis. I think maybe God planted this seed in this direction in my mind, because remember how I said, go get your canned foods, go get your dry foods, go keep prepping your pantry because what if it doesn't grow anyway what if this happens what if a tornado comes through well what if you have a surgery coming up and you don't even know about it yet can you imagine right now had I just dropped a bunch of goat babies in February okay here we are the very last couple of days of February and if I had bred my goat girls even just half of them and had a bunch of goat babies right now in February which is pretty typical for a lot of people they prefer that depending on where they live I would be milking right now there's no physical way. Now, I have other people to help me. I get it. It can get done, but it's a strain on the family when things get out of sync. So this is what I'm saying. This is a valuable conversation that, guys, you need to have this. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of things happen to people over the last two plus years for various reasons. I'm not getting into all of the things that I think and believe and you do too and da, da, da. I'm just speaking from all generic possibilities. People are getting sick. People have been sick. People are developing diseases they never had before. People are having problems all over the board. And so when that happens and that strain hits, your productivity changes or goes down. Okay. So have a plan. I'm fortunate and I understand that, that I have turn on a dime. My husband can do things that I normally do. It's not that he doesn't want to help me. It's because like I've told you before, I have responsibilities that I do. He has responsibilities. He does. <clears throat> and so now he's going to have to kick it into overdrive. My sons are going to kick it into overdrive. And yes, this is what families should do, but you have to prepare for that. You have to, I think ladies, especially it's really hard. Well, not just ladies. I, I, I find that people, gentlemen that are very self-reliant and that farm, they farm, when they get to a point where they are figuring out that they are slowing down or they have to change or maybe they need to stop and do something else, it takes somebody through a mental situation because you, we feel like we're not doing enough. And even as, as ridiculous as this is, it's still something that happens with us. So this is why we prepare. See, I don't have to worry about are we going to eat this week? because we have been prepared. I don't have to worry about, do I need to run and get this for my goats or my dogs or my chickens? No. Check, check, check. Patera has to worry about not tearing her incision open <laughs> and pushing herself too hard. And all the while, my son <clears throat> is going to be learning extra valuable things this week because he's going to be doing the hard labor. I'm going to be there to help supervise and remind uh, and to teach him some new things. And that's a blessing. Maybe that's why this has happened, you know. But again, it's a reminder. When your gut tells you to prepare and tells you to switch gears in a way, you need to follow that direction. Because God may be preparing you for something that you didn't even know was coming. How many times have we talked about this? How many of you, please share your story because I know somebody's going to say, you know, I prepared for a year and we were this and this and this. And I am so blessed that we did that because my husband lost his job. And in the four months that he was unemployed, we didn't have to worry about anything. 
We had a savings account. We had plenty of food. Our dog ate. We were totally taken care of till we got back on our feet. That's the whole point of, of all of this. Because the reality is, is every single one of us are going to have something happen. A health setback, a job setback. And you know as well as I do that right now the entire population is totally ripened for a complete crisis regardless. This just brings it more to light of how critical and how sensitive things are, especially us as humans. We can only go so far. We only go so far. I know, I'm, I'm telling myself, girl, you only go so far. So anyway, I hope this video helps you out. I did post on Facebook yesterday. I just want to give this little plug. I went, James, <laughs> uh, we did go to, we got up and it was raining so bad. And uh, we got everything done. I was slow, but, and uh, we got to go downtown to the East Tennessee History Center. I keep telling you guys, if you're doing genealogy, go to the East Tennessee History Center. It's on Gay Street. It's across from the Tennessee Theater. Wonderful genealogy class yesterday on African-American ancestry and DNA. And, um, and so I'm digging on my roots and it was wonderful. And the people there were wonderful. It was a class full of people of all colors, literally. And we were all helping each other. We all have the same goal. And it was really, a, a, I'm going to tell you this. Um, it was, I got a little emotional, probably because I'm, you know, I'm, how women are. We're, when we hurt and we're emotional, we tend to cry. Or if we're really mad, we cry too. <laughs> but, um, you know, I watched a um, gentleman get his DNA yesterday. He turned it in. This is not a debate on whether or not you want to submit your DNA or not. You do whatever works for you. They have your DNA. I just want to let you know. <laughs> If you've done anything in the last probably like 30 years, anything, blood work at all or whatever, they have your DNA. That's not telling you to have a DNA test to find out what you are or what you ain't. I'm just saying, when people say that, I'm like, okay, they got you, but that's all right. Um, I'm sorry, it's what I think. But um, he opened up his DNA. He was in his 70s. He was in his 70s. And he's, I'm just going to say it, he was black. But he opened up his DNA. <clears throat> it was him and his brother. And um, he found out he was 27% Scottish uh, and from Norway and from England. And he was like, see, we're all in this together. I was like, I know. <laughs> it was a wonderful time. Well, guys, I hope you find this video helpful. I'm going to do some videos this week. Geraldine has not had her babies yet. Um, I just, she should be, it should be any day we start seeing some pips. Now, remember, I kind of started that with that little miss Tur little miss turkey turkey roll um and i was guessing day one so i could be off a couple of days and we knew that but nothing yet she's still on them uh we'll have to figure out what to do with her when that starts my instinct again is telling me like i said in the last video or so leave her alone chill and potato chill Guys, I hope you find this helpful. We'll have a lot of videos coming your way. I've got to candle eggs and do all kinds of seed saving and different things this week. So it'll be good. I'll slow down just a little bit. We'll talk and show what we can. And I just appreciate you all the time. But please think about what I've said. Because I'm telling you right now, whether it's sickness, surgery, job loss, death in your family, God forbid, I get it. But these things happen. And uh, they happen to the best of us at any given point and it can be minor or it can be big we just don't know but what matters is is that we are doing our best in all ways to keep ourselves in check and to keep that pantry stocked like subscribe and share guys we appreciate you we'll see you very soon on another video at the farm on it